Okay, how's that? Perfect. This is a regular meeting held on Wednesday, September 13, 2017, 6 p.m. Call to order. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Freeholder Craig? Here. Freeholder Graham? Here. Freeholder Patillo? Here. Freeholder Rose? Present. Freeholder Director Lazaro? Here. Please join me in a moment of silence and slip the crack led by Deputy Jonathan Rose. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> no. No, I saw what happened to, uh, <laughs> what's his name, the video from Ted Cruz. <laughs> you want to tell us? Oh, it's Ted Cruz. Pursuant to Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, PL 1975, adequate notice as defined by Section 3B of Chapter 231, PL 1975, has been made by regular mail. Such notice being submitted on September 7, 2017, from the Administrative Center of the County of Sussex, located at 1 Spring Street, Newton, New Jersey, to the following, the New Jersey Herald, WSUS Radio, New Jersey Sunday Herald, WNNJ Radio, Star Ledger, and is also posted on the bulletin board, maintained in the Administration Center for Public Announcements, and has been submitted to the Sussex County Clerk in compliance with said act. We have a motion for the approval of the agenda. Second. I'll second. I have a motion by Freeholder Patillo and a second by Freeholder Rose. Is there any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Motion is carried. Um, we're going to be resolved to go into executive session, providing for closed session and not open to the public in accordance with the provisions of NJSA 10 colon 4 dash 12 at SEC, whereas the subject matter about to be discussed may be excluded from the public portion of the meeting by resolution of the Board of Chosen Freeholders as an exemption, exception, I'm sorry, to the public, uh, Open Public Meetings Act pursuant to NJSA 10 colon 4 dash 12B, and whereas it appears necessary for the Board of Chosen Freeholders to discuss such matters in executive session, now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Chosen Freeholders of the County of Sussex, in accordance with the provisions of NJSA 10 colon 4 dash 12B, and NJSA 10 colon 4 dash 13, that the board at this time enter into executive session from which the public shall be excluded. The general nature of the subjects to be discussed, following uh, items are authorized by NJSA 10 colon 4 dash 12B, and designated as matters related to litigation, negotiations, and the attorney client privilege, uh, namely Woodruff Robert versus the County of Sussex, Michael Estrada et al, and the solar investigation. Uh, being further resolved that upon completion of the business for which the board has entered into the executive session, the board shall reconvene and resume its meeting open to the public. Do I have a motion, please? I'll make that motion. Second. That motion. And then second by Freeholder Graham. Is there a discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. We're in executive session. Public hearings number eight bet to between item number 12, approval of minutes, and item number 13, appointments and or resignations. Well, second. Motion. Is there a second? Second. 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 Motion by Freeholder Rose and a second by Freeholder Graham uh, to uh, amend the agenda. Is there discussion? Yes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. Okay, so we're moving item 8 to uh, follow item 10. <coughs> uh, proclamations, uh, presentations of Timothy Zabriskie uh, was awarded a, uh, a grant, uh, a scholarship grant. He is a uh, graduate of Sussex County Technical School and he is now attending Rowan University where he is studying uh, in a, uh, uh, physics in environmental science, uh, green design and green technology, and the PSEMG grant that was awarded uh, to him is uh, on behalf of uh, an individual uh, who uh, is studying and pursuing a field of uh, green technology. So Timothy's not here, and we wish him well, and we'll see to it that he gets his check. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. His check was sent directly to Rowan, so he's already been awarded that grant. OK. 
congratulations to him. It's a great, a great opportunity for him to be able to Congratulations to them. Um, public session from the floor. Can I have a motion to open public session? Motion to open. I'll motion second. by Freelder Graham, second by uh, Freelder Rose. Uh, please note everyone is asked, uh, is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. Please note everyone is asked to keep their comments to five minutes or less and only address issues regarding the agenda item. Please state your name, spell your last name, and state your municipal residency. Our floor is open for public session. Agenda items only. Yes. Thank you. Is, that, is this open session just for agenda only? Yeah, yeah, right. Thank you. Make a motion to close the public session. Motion to close. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Motion is carried. Uh, free order comments. Free order crab. I had the uh, pleasure to attend the annual senior picnic at the Franklin Nutritional Center just this last week. They were lucky they had uh, perfect weather for their 11 o'clock. I think they had 130 plus seniors there. Um, a representative from senior services was Christina Marks. And I got to tell you that that senior services continues to make the first stride these things it was a wonderful uh event they uh, you know the caterer came in and hamburgers hot dogs uh, hungarian sausage uh, good stuff uh the entertainment was from down below it was a guy and his wife that to a person <coughs> they love but i must be getting older because at these senior citizen events they're no longer playing big band music they're playing 50s <laughs> pretty, soon, uh, pretty soon they'll be playing disco. <laughs> um, but they had a great time there. Uh, saw a lot of familiar faces from Franklin. Saw a lot of faces from outside the area because um, I think Franklin Nutritional Center is known for the service level that they provide. It's a no short order to do to Cindy Space, who's been there forever uh, for us. And manages that, makes sure that the menu gets out, coordinates, um, the food that comes down from the hospital. Um, as a matter of fact, I can tell you that there's several seniors that shoot me uh, on Sunday mornings that what they do is they look at the menu for the upcoming week and decide what days that they're going to be there. It's almost every day uh, that they're there. So kudos not only to the Franklin Nutritional Center, but to senior services here for a great event and uh, uh, the comment was is that they want to have it more often. So I think that's a measure of what the success was. I also need to mention our good friend and uh, still active fireman, Eddie Midland, 93 years young, still walks the golf course uh, three times a week, and he hit on every lady that was at his picture. <laughs> that's all. Um, I just wanted to say that I was very honored to be able to present uh, awards to the senior who won the senior contest at the Sussex County Art and Heritage Council. Um, it's so important that we keep our seniors involved, and there were 14 winners of different um, areas of art, and the artwork that they had at the gallery was just beautiful. They did a beautiful job. I was very proud to be there, very proud of all of them. I also was invited to Picatinny Arsenal. They had, a, had an ornament graduation. They started a, a bachelor's and a PhD in ornament. And what it is, that the matter that they explained it to the people that were there for the graduation, was that in every branch of service, they have a special, um, special forces unit. It's called something different in every branch of service. What they're doing with this master's and PhD program is they're making the intellect, uh, which is equal to these units. In other words, these are the people that they're gonna be working on the weaponry that these particular special forces will be using. Uh, they, they do so many wonderful <coughs> things and interesting things over picketing Arsenal. Every time I'm invited, I, I just learn more and I, and I love to go there. They, they just have a, an absolute, um, 
beautiful way of honoring and of uh, having their ceremonies planned. It was really a nice day. And I want to congratulate the two men that graduated. The course is just starting, um, and they had two men. And the interesting thing is when I asked about the credits and the accreditation, they're looking to get the accreditation. So that would become retroactive for the graduates that graduated this year. But their credits are actually double what you normally would have for a master's and a PhD program. It's a really intense program. I was also invited to the Senior Nutrition Center for Vernon. They were celebrating their 25th anniversary. They had a beautiful lunch. Uh, and once again, it's, it's nice to see all the seniors that come out to socialize, to be involved in the activities, and to get at least one good hot lunch every day. <coughs> and they were putting a time capsule uh, together to celebrate the 25th anniversary, which was very nice. I was also invited to a pack on seniors meeting, Seniors Inc. Uh, they wanted to know what a freeholder was and what we do. <laughs> I thought that was really interesting because so many times I speak to someone and I say, well, I'm a freeholder in the county, and they really have no idea what a freeholder does. So we had a great afternoon and they asked really wonderful questions, and it was nice to be back home. I also had the opportunity to meet the new headmaster of the Hilltop Country Day School in Sparta, Kevin Folwin. I'd like to uh, just welcome him to the community. He really wants to uh, get involved. He's introduced himself to Gus over at the tech school and John Connolly up at the college. So it's interesting to see a small private school like that wanting to get involved with the community. Uh, I'm welcome to have his interest and, and um, his, um, the time that he wants to spend with all the different activities in the community. September 30th is Apple Pie and Art in a Pack On, and that's sponsored by the Pack On Creative Arts Council and the Sussex County Community College. We started this last year. Um, we bring artists down from the college. We bring artists. It, it used to be just for a Pack On, but now that we have the Sussex County Art and Heritage Group involved, we're bringing our seniors who won all of those beautiful presentations and prizes from the Heritage Council down for the show. Um, we're also going to be having the children make the happiness rocks. I don't know if anyone knows about the rocks. So we'll be, be having that as well. And there's, there's a different group of artists that come, come to these type of um, events. And it's a nice day. And we do give apple pie. Okay, so we're in the high school. We can't have wine and cheese. So we do have apple pie. And everyone is invited to come. It's from 11 to 4 on the 30th of September. And I also want to remind everybody that on September 16th at Waterloo Village, um, your Sussex County Art and Heritage Council will be sponsoring the 2017 Art Festival. So that's at Waterloo Village on the 16th, and that is from 12 to 4 as well. And I think that's it. That's it. Thank you. Um, What is a freeholder? Yeah, that was a difficult one. It's an interesting question. I've, I've been a freeholder for four and a half years. What is a freeholder? And what do you do? A freeholder is somebody who oversees the county government. We are the board of directors. We don't run it every day. We don't run it day to day. We don't run every little thing that happens all the way down the line. Uh, I said when I first became a councilman in Stano, I learned that, that it was all about the pipes. It was just about a question of how big the pipes were. They were just a little bigger up here than they were when I was in Stanton. Uh, the gentleman who runs the day-to-day -day on, the, on the captain side of things is Greg Pop. He's the, he's the administrator. So he runs the day-to-day. -day. There are so many different services. There are so many different necessities that are required for the average person to get by in Sussex County. Even though we have 144,000 people, we don't have a lessening of uh, responsibilities from those counties that have a million people, or a million and a half people. We don't have that. We have to handle the same amount of services as we do here. We have to figure out a way of doing that. And some of those services are flu clinics. Uh, through September, we're gonna be having flu clinic, flu clinics, and they will be on our website. And they're on already? Yeah. That's our web master over there. Freedom, Vernon, Opacom, Sussex County Library in Frankfurt, Wantage Library, Sandiston, and Sparta. They will be handling, handling through from September the 16th to October the 7th. We have health screen, screening clinics, I don't know why I'm saying things that, on October the 2nd uh, at the Wheatsworth campus. And Wheatsworth and Partisan is where our health department is. Um, they will be providing um, 
thin prep pack tests, HPV testing, pelvic exams, clinical breast exam, and colorectal testing. No fee for NJC grant eligible participants, which are people who are, uh, uh, have a, uh, an income issues. We have mammography screenings for those that can't afford to just go to their doctors. Free mammography screenings will be held at Wheatsworth on September the 15th, uh, which is Friday. And uh, they're pretty much every month. The NJ our NJC program is one of the most successful in the state. Child Health Conference, Well Clinic, are also conducted on September the 19th from 12.30 to 4 p.m. Um, Division of Community and Youth Services have regular meetings in this room. Now, what is that? Our kids live in a complicated world. They really do. It's not what it was when, well, I've seen a few people over here who have a little bit of snow on the roof, so we have older kids. But it's a complicated world, and things can change very, very rapidly. We actually have a meeting in here that's conducted by every nonprofit that has anything to do with children, um, has to do with uh, juvenile uh, corrections, has to do with schools, and it's done here, and it's done at 12.30 in the afternoon. And the reason it's done at 12.30 is because all these people are working. These are all, all, all people who are, are working. Uh, at this meeting on September the 20th. Um, on September the 21st at 4 p.m., we have a meeting also here for the Local Advisory Committee on Alcoholism and Drug Abuse, which segues into something that I attended a couple weeks ago, which was the opiate vigil across the street at the, uh, at the Green. It was very, very emotional. Um, as I say, our, our kids don't have an easy world up there. Not that we did, but there seems to be even more difficult. Um, to understand all the things that we have, we only have certain ways of getting our message out. We can speak to those messages here. We can put them in the paper, which the paper is very generous in using their time to do that. We use nonprofits to do that. We use direct communications to do that. We talk, we have our, our visiting nurses go all over the county to do that. We've been trying to achieve what, what I call a matrix. If you're in trouble, where do you go? If you're in trouble on a Tuesday afternoon, you call the office and somebody will take care of you. But what if you're in trouble at 1 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday? Where do you go? Where do you go? Most likely you go to a website. We've been working on that website. The most difficult part about it is that it, it, it moves. So over the last two years, there's been a lot of changes, a lot of improvement. It's not perfect. Those that want it to be perfect, we work on it. It's a regular thing. How often do you challenge the website, Thor, if I might ask? How often do I change it? How often do you go in there and make changes? A few times a day. A few times a day. And it's, he's not exaggerating. He's not exaggerating. Because every time something comes up, something has to change. Sometimes there's an address in there that's old. Sometimes there's a contact that's old. Sometimes somebody changes jobs. Sometimes the telephone number is changed. Whatever that is, that website is kept up and it is, is redundant in its ability to get us to where we have to go. Can it be better? Yes. In fact, Greg Poff is going to talk about how wonderful our new website is that we're moving on at some point in time. I don't think he's ready to talk about it. But I want people to know that we do an exceptional job in getting the services out. Sometimes we have a little bit of difficulty in making sure that everybody knows what those services are and where they are. That's what we're working on. But we work Something was not described. Um, sometimes the um, we work within our own system, our own employees to do it. I see that we have employees actually in the room. We have uh, employees in the room that, that actually provide these services. But a lot of times, what we do is we work with nonprofits to get the services done that we have to get done. Those for seniors, social services, human services, are a combination of things. It could be anything from somebody who finds themselves homeless on a Friday night to somebody who is. Uh, out on the street and, and, and just doesn't know how to provide or, or, or bags of groceries. Um, which takes me to where I want to talk about is Veterans and Veterans Advisory Committee. We have a committee of veterans. Anyone in the room is veteran? We have a Veterans Advi Advisory Committee. Do you belong to the Veterans Advisory Committee? Well, you can. Nothing is done unilaterally on the veterans part in this county without it being run through the Veterans Advisory Committee. It's a regular meeting, and to those who don't know about it, find out about it. It's not, it's not a bad thing to know about. Because then you know about things before they happen instead of after they happen. Um, 
Um, I'd like to talk about the health department a little bit. Our health department has been in a little bit of a, of a change, and it's actually been positive changes. We've been reaching out and doing a lot more uh, reach out to the communities. We have, on a monthly basis, we have a call in. Every single town is given information ahead of time that they can call in, and then they have a round table. So you don't have to leave the building. We don't have to have people come, driving in from all over the county and losing half their day. They call in at uh, 10 o'clock, and for an hour, they get to talk about whatever they have to talk about. How are, the range, how are our services doing? What are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do in, in terms of, uh, of mosquito um, uh, spraying or whatever it is that we have to do. So our towns are communicating directly, excuse me, our county is direct, communicating directly with the towns. They are doing that. And if they are not calling in, put pressure on your towns. Why aren't you calling in? Um, before I do finish, because I've gone on a little bit here, I'd like to do a shout out to our county clerk. Our county clerk has done an excellent job, probably even better than what he'll tell. Um, his revenues are up. He's been doing a great job in servicing, making sure that the seniors get their, not seniors, the veterans get their veterans cards. But more than anything else, he keeps everything very, very honest. Um, he's done a great job for the county, and uh, I know that nobody ever says anything nice about elected officials except for themselves. But I do want to say a shout out. I, I, I sat with him the other day, and uh, I think he's doing an exceptional job. So that's all I have. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to, or before I begin, I'd like to congratulate Ron Tappan on, on his new job as OPAC County Administrator. People may remember, may remember that Ron led us through some very difficult times here in the county, so congratulations on that new move for Ron. Hopefully it's an uh, <coughs> upward move for him. On September 5th, uh, we had a meeting with Lyft after a year and a half of attempting to get their attention. We finally got somebody in the room with us. When I say we, it was uh, Mr. Greg Poff. Carol Navra and a Lyft representative, Monica CPAC. We talked about uh, Lyft provision services in two ways. Uh, the first way is through their app, which everyone is familiar with, Lyft and Uber. Uh, and there's some possibilities of working with uh, Health and Human Services uh, through this. What the county can do is to provide coupon codes. They'd be a one-time use code. The coupon codes can be geofenced, so you can say you can only take rides within the county. Uh, they are. They can be gate limited, so you can say it goes for a certain number of months. It can be capped at a, at an amount, a total amount, and it can either be 100% of the ride is is, uh, is is paid for, or 50% of the ride and 50% of the ride up to $100 per month, or 50% of the ride up to $200 for up to three months. Things like that. It can also be uh, time limited, so that you can say it only works between the hours of 8 a.m. and 7 p.m. if you're trying to get somebody to and from work. So there's a lot of possibilities with those. The one downside is that uh, the Lyft app generally requires a credit card, uh, which is a big problem for people who are uh, low income. And so there's two possibilities we're looking into. The first is there's a possibility to use gift cards instead of credit cards. We're not sure if that would work. But if that doesn't work, they have what's called a concierge ser service. And what happens there is you can call into uh, call into an operator. And the county already has operators that dispatch for trans transit. So you would call into our transit dispatchers and they would use a web interface to dispatch a Lyft driver to the place where the person is, pick them up and then bring them to where they want to go. That service would be back billed to the county 100% and then the county would be responsible for uh, billing the individual client if, uh, if we were say going to do a 50-50 share on the, the cost or a split or whatever the split may be. Um, tomorrow uh, we will be having uh, the same people. Uh, we'll be having a phone conference with Uber, so we hope to hear what they have to say. I'll report back at the nice pre old meeting of town. That's it, Mr. Kirk. Thank you. Um, the uh, there's light at the end of the tunnel for Hopkins Farm. The bridge is on schedule and it should be completed in October. So they will be able to move back and forth again. I'm sure they'll be very excited over there, plan a big party. Um, I just remind you that uh, uh, Sussex County Day and Champion of the Grill are going to be held in combination uh, this coming Sunday, and that will be held at the Clark Marshall Grounds in uh, uh, Frankfurt uh, Township. Um, the road department has completed. I'm sorry. What time does that start? At noon. Yeah. 
The road department has uh, uh, completed a significant portion of restriping and repaving, uh, uh, resurfacing uh, several of the roads throughout the county. Uh, they've done a, a, an awesome job and there's been a lot of uh, engineering going on as they prepare to do the uh, resurface some other roads that will be done uh, either in the fall or at the beginning of next year. Um, and that's all that I have at this time. Um, at our regular meeting held on August 9, 2017, we adopted a, a uh, resolution and advertised in the New Jersey Herald issues of uh, August 15, 2017 and August 22, 2017, together with a notice of public hearing stating that there would be a public hearing held at this meeting at 7 p.m. The resolution is to amend the Sussex County Solid Waste Management Plan for Pace Glass, Class A Recycling Facility, County Route 669, Limecrest Road, and over Township. Uh, can I have a motion that the public hearing be open? I'll make that motion. I have a motion by second. Freeholder uh, Rose and a second by Freeholder Graham. Is there discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. Do you have a representative from Pace Glass here? Yes. Would you uh, like to introduce yourself? And, uh, if there's anyone uh, that wishes to have a comment or speak, that would be permitted at this time. You don't like that with me, I'm not a public speaker, so I'm trying to do this stuff here. That's fine. I'm trying to see an idea who we are. So the history of last year's second in the U.S. has been always been a strong, strong history due to the fact that the collection process has become more and more difficult. We're proposing that we build a uh, plant that we can actually process material that is already processed in a north plant within the counties. We bring the material here, we process it again, pull more records of the material. Um, but the business itself is an actual, we're asking to get amended because it's an A license because we're picking up A license material which has already been separated. We're just taking that material and we're going to separate it. So it's a stream of material that their equipment's not able to handle, but our equipment and our plant will be able to handle. So we pick it up from multiple locations in the state of New Jersey, bring it here, sort it out again into three different colors, and it all ends up back into the container, industry glass container industry, which we remelt it back down again and turn it into glass containers. It's the size of the plant's investment, he has it down here, he wants to say it. It's about $60 million spent, somewhere in the region about 100, 100 jobs, anywhere from 80 to 100 jobs uh, over the course of two to three years. Uh, we'd like to start it as, as soon as possible, which is why we're here hoping that you should vote for this at the end. And at the end of it, I'd like to ask you to send this application down to the DEP for an amendment of the solid waste plan. Okay? Thank you very much. Okay, uh, your site is. Uh on the south end of Limecrest. That's right. right? Yes. Does, this, does the industrial rail go that far down to you? Or the, the, the industrial rail is not in the nice. application, but at a further date, we want to apply for the rail to bring the rail back to the info site. It is for the roads along the property okay. or against the property. Okay. Have to be so it does go down. Yes, yeah. the access is there to actually bring the store in, which is one of the things we'll be doing in the future. The red right is not on the Because one of the things I heard that they're going to bring recycled glass up from down below. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, and bring it here, and then you're going to do some magic to it, and yeah. then you're going to send it at West Coast. We're basically going to send it to uh, 14 different states. Mm -hmm. And it will be going by rail. Initially, it will go by truck, but hopefully, in the end of the day, it will be going by rail. One of the options we're looking at right now is I can get this right in Baltimore before we might actually go to Mississippi and send it down to the would be a cheaper option. Mm -hmm. But we'd still have to rail from, from here to. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So the rail itself gives me an idea. The rail is pretty difficult to deal with. It's, it's better. It's tough. So we've been talking to the rail for a couple of years right now. It looks like they're they're leaning in our direction to actually put the rail in, which we really want to yeah. happen. Yeah. And, and you're talking about a significant number of jobs, local jobs. You're looking at the region here. Probably local jobs around forty people. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a sizable investment. Um, it's something I feel very strongly. Yeah. I come from Europe as well, but I've been in the United States for 18 years, believe it or not, being with the accident. Good accident. Good accident. 
Well, we weren't born in the Bronx, but you know, we grew up in the world where <coughs> every piece of material is recycled. Yeah, yeah. So we look to we look to avenues where something is is now waste and we're brought into recycling the stream at ninety eight percent and brought back into recycling value. Good clean industry. Yeah, you're not new to this business either. Right? You are. No, I'm not. I'm not new to business. We had a business in Europe where we did exactly this too. That's your right. I'm also in the construction business and in massive health care because all of this has been done uh, you know, coming straight out of the ground here. We're very knowledgeable in, in, in the construction industry in the United States. We do a lot of high rise buildings down there, concrete and that so this kind of fits the whole model and I always want to get back on the industry. But Sussex County has the land and that's what we like about it. We were able to get a site that was uh, significant enough for us up here. And I think we'll be a big help to the county and we'll be a big improvement. We're not looking to the county in any way, shape or form. Your other recycling plant is in Jersey City. That's where you are. My other recycling plant. We have a smaller recycling plant in Jersey City. Just to give you a rough idea of what we're trying to do, we built a model plant that does about 2,000 tons of, of this material a week. Um, mm -hmm. This is obviously a lot extended our plant because we know the business is there for that and the material is actually there for that. We're diverting close to 80% of this material from landfill. That's it's, all real cars. Yeah. It's yeah. Not yeah. There's no doubt about it, there's definitely not a thing. You're probably talking to someone who reaches about half a million tons a year of material. Good for her. Well, you think that, but they, they don't want to lower the price. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they will. Well, not well, very competitive. Yeah, well. <laughs> well, it's their history. Don't get there. They're tough. They don't get there. But you know, there's some, some benefits there. Look, ultimately being on the rail <coughs> and the later days on the outbound material is an amazing, amazing help. So, so it is something that's in the world. It's something that would happen pretty quickly. Um, obviously, if we can get this, this road forward and there's some permits here and get the point we're taking, the rail will be going along at the same time. So, maybe two to three months from now, we'll have that conversation to work on. For the entire of the real business, I mean, they seem to have a lot of action up there. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, for the old timers, this is going to be where the old line just pulled it years and years ago, right. back on the old section. So it's perfect. Yeah, there's a lane there, I think it's about half a mile long, and there's nothing used to be 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 used this is just a private business, not going to cost the capital any money. So what are they asking you to do? Change the also. This is to uh, <coughs> include them into the solid, solid, them into the, uh, solid waste uh, uh, program. The plan. The plan. Bureaucracy. That's all. There's a, sol there's a solid waste uh, yeah. plan, management plan. And every time that anybody comes in that does anything more or less, we have to amend the plan. That's what this is. It's just amending the plan. It's a private business. Right. I'm in favor of private business. Thank you. As opposed to a solid project. We <laughs> <Yeah>. know. <laughs> Anyone else? Seeing that, I have a motion that the public hearing be closed. I'll make that motion. I have a motion by Freeholder Rose. Is there a second? Second. A second by Freeholder Graham. Is there discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion is carried. And the resolution is completed. We're done. No any more hearings. So we don't have to close this one? No. no. It's all done? No. Hearing is done. Yes. Okay. The hearing the next meeting is yeah, yeah, we anticipate the resolution for approval being on the agenda for the second meeting in October. Um, it was this, uh, discussed at the SPAC meeting last night. SPAC may have an update to the board um, to its initial resolution about the status of the, uh, the, the site, and then we'll have that and any comments to receive between now and the uh, adoption. Okay. Is that not the time because of? Statute, or is that just a lot of time? Just a lot of time for the next WAC meeting. All 
All right. Approval of the consent agenda, resolutions. Resolution, resolution read authorization authorizing revised offer for acquisition of two of the parcels required for reconstruction and realignment of bridge X09, County Route 565 over Papakating Creek in Wattage Township. Uh, this is to provide extra uh, area uh, to realign the bridge and the roadway. Uh, authorization in exchange of lands with the United States Department of the Interior, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service for the reconstruction and realignment of Bridge X09 County Route 565 over Papakating Bridge, Marge Township. These are related uh, resolutions uh, in which enable us to realign the Route 565 bridge over the creek. A resolution authorizing the public sale of county property and designation of an online auction service through New Jersey State Contract. This is uh, uh, a property that was uh, acquired by the uh, uh, county through uh, law enforcement or other areas or, or uh, unused property and it's available for public purchase. Resolution authorizing to provide for the purchase of HVAC equipment and related controls at the Sussex County Jail Command Center. Uh, that speaks for itself, heating and ventilation equipment. Authorization for the freeholder director. And the clerk of the board has chosen freeholders to execute the salary reimbursement agreement between the County of Sussex and Rutgers Cooperative Extension, Rutgers the State University of New Jersey for the provision of educational services in the areas of agriculture, home economics, and forage development for the calendar year 2017. This is an ongoing uh, contract and relationship between Rutgers Cooperative Extension and Rutgers University with our 4-H and our uh, agricultural services in the county. A resolution authorizing for the Freeholder Director to execute contract extension with the Sussex County Division of Social Services in the amount of $15,027 for the period of July 1st through 2017 through December 31st, 2017, provision of transportation vouchers. Resolution G, authorization for the freeholder director to execute a letter of agreement for funding in the amount of $50,000 from the Morris Sussex Warren Employment and Training Services Needs Based Work Supports Program for the provision of transportation services to low income residents for the period of July 1st, 2017 through June 30th, 2018. Uh, this is a, uh, a funding uh, arrangement for. Uh, low-income uh, transportation. Authorizing the County of Sussex to enter into a shared services agreement with Byron Township for the provision of 911 system management through the County of Sussex in accordance with the provisions of NJSA 40A colon 65-1 at SEC and NJSA 40A colon 11-10 at SEC. Uh, this is an agreement with Byron to commit to the 911 center. Uh, utilizing their services for their ta their township. <coughs> Authorizing for the freeholder director to execute a transportation contract modification number two with the New Jersey Department of Human Services Division of Family Development to raise the current contracted reimbursement ceiling of $33,660 to $50,490 in total. Funding to the Sussex County Department of Health and Human Services Division of Community and Youth Services and to extend the contract term from 12 to 18 months, July 1st, 2016 to December 31st, 2017. Uh, this uh, resolution speaks for itself. Authorization with the Freeholder Director to execute social services for the homeless contract modification number three with the New Jersey Department of Human Services, Division of Family Development, to raise the current contracted reimbursable ceiling of 172.695 to 269 uh, 042 in total funding to the, human, the Sussex County Department of Health and Human Services, Division of Community and News Services, and to extend the contract term from 12 to 18 months, July 1st, 2016, to December 1st, 31st, 2007. Uh, resolution read the authorization to provide for the purchase of new computer software and system support from County Business Systems, Inc the amount of $145,000 for the Office of the County Surrogate. Uh, this is capital expenditure that was requested by the Surrogate's Office to update their computer system. This is a system that integrates with the rest of the state and the surrogates throughout the state are using. 
authorizing a resolution authorizing the entry into a professional services agreement with Prime Healthcare Services St. Clair's LLC for provision of radiology services to the inmates of the Dwyer Correctional Facility pursuant to NJSA 40A colon 11-51AI. Uh, this is a resolution for St. Clair's to handle our uh, radiology services and the next uh, one, two, three, four services relate to medical services for the jail. Authorizing the entry into a professional services agreement with Prime Healthcare, uh, St. Clair's LLC, for provision of ambulance transport services for inmates of the Kiodwire Correctional Facility, pursuant to NGSA 40A colon 11-51AI. The resolution authorizing entry into a professional services agreement with Prime Healthcare Services, St. Clair's LLC for the provision, provision of medical care to inmates in the Kiodwire Correctional Facility. And resolution reauthorizing professional services agreement with Dr. Ralph Woodward, MD, as a medical director for the inmates within the Kiodwire Correctional Facility, pursuant to NJSA 48-11-51AI. Uh, these resolutions are all to, to provide ongoing health care for the inmates in the correctional facility, and it's very difficult to get uh, people to come in and provide these services. So this is a, uh, a thing that, that we've been working on for quite a while, and glad we've got to find the result. Resolution providing participation with the state of New Jersey in state and local law enforcement assistance program administered by the Department of Law and Public <coughs> Safety. A resolution to amend the Human Services Grant Agreement number 17-1394-AAA-C-2, modification number one with the New Jersey Department of Human Services Division of Aging Services. <coughs> the Board of Chosen Freeholders of the County of Sussex has reviewed the consent agenda consisting of various proposed resolutions <coughs> Determine that the adoption of the said resolutions is in and will further public interest. Motion. Motion. I'll second. And motion by Freeholder Graham and a second by Freeholder Rose. Is there discussion? Please call the roll. Freeholder Graham? Yes. Freeholder Graham? Yes. Freeholder Tillo? Yes. Freeholder Rose? Yes. Freeholder Director Mazzaro? Yes. Approval of the minutes, a regular meeting, August 9th, 2017. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion by Freeholder Graham. Is there a second? Yeah, second. Second by Freeholder Patillo. Is there a discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Approval of the executive session, August 9th, 2017. Is there a motion? A motion that's it. Motion Freeholder Graham. Is there a second? Second. Second Freeholder Patillo. Is there a discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. Appointments and resignations. Those resolutions. Uh, resolution A, we're providing temporary closure of County Route 616 in the town of Newton for the Sussex County Fireman's Annual Inspection Day Parade. That will be on the first Saturday in October, and uh, that will be in the town of Newton. The resolution re providing Temporary closure of County Route 631 in Franklin Borough for a fireworks display. I guess just to have a fireworks display. Is there a bit connected with that? Yeah, because of yeah, Franklin Day. Franklin Day. Oh, Franklin. Uh, Franklin Days. Franklin Days. Uh, Franklin days. It's, it's like three days. Okay. When you is can that? buy a little. That's uh, at the end of the month, the last week of the month, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay. Well, you can buy a little bracelet to go on all the rides for three days. Oh, um, really? Even like there's no age, no age. <laughs> they have senior citizen rides. They have to close six. Yeah, all sure. Citizens. They have to close six thirty one down because the fireworks go like from here to the door from six thirty one. That's what okay. uh, C resolution providing temporary closure of six thirty and five nineteen in Branchville Borough for the annual Halloween Day Parade, uh, which I guess is sponsored by the Branchville Businessmen's Club. A resolution read designating the members of the Sussex County Voting Accessibility Advisory Committee. Is there a motion? A motion. Motion. Freeholder Graham. Is All there a second? Second. Keep the bracelet. 
Maybe we'll share the bracelet. Three days. We'll buy a bracelet we'll all use it. <laughs> 20 bucks, three days. I think there's three rides. Wait a second. I second. Oh, we second it. Second for you to tell uh, Is there discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. Awards of contracts, change in orders and bids, awards of contracts. Resolution award contract for ice control materials, rock salt, and snow grit, 2017 and 18 for the County of Sussex Division of Public Works. Um, this is a, a uh, we'll get a good price on this, so this is a, an excellent contract. We topped off last year. Um, yep. Resolution awarding contract extension for the purchase of the jail management system software package for the Keogh Dwyer Correctional Facility, the software to manage the ongoing things over there. Resolution award contract extension for Chem, Chemon Supply Corporation for the supply and delivery of snowplow blades for the 2017-18 session. Uh, we're expecting snow. Resolution reading award of contract for roof replacement and exterior repairs at the county park building. Uh, that's to uh, repair the Jenny's uh, house building roof. We have, and that is actually money that was put aside in 2015. Yeah. We've had trouble finding the proper vendors to do that metal roof. <coughs> so it's, it's taken a long time to get us to where we are, but that's something we planned for a number of years ago. Is there a motion? So, a motion by Fiorella Patillo, second. Second. Fiorella Grant. Is there discussion? Just real briefly, not only are we getting uh, a good price with the timing of this purchase for the rock salt, we've always been able to make arrangements where we almost got guaranteed delivery whenever that we needed through the year. That's there's been there's been some larger towns here that have had contracts but have been challenged delivery wise. That hasn't been the case, so kudos to the guys up on the third floor. Full roll please. Freeholder Kraft? Yes. Freeholder Graham? Yes. Freeholder Patillo? Yes. Freeholder Rose? Yes. Freeholder Director Lazaro? Yes. Bid resolution or rejection of all bids for award of contract for the purchase of installation of two dump bodies with hydraulic pumps and controls, spreaders, plows, and wings for the County of Sussex. <coughs> uh, a motion? A motion. Second. So we second. So motion for the Graham, second for the Patillo. Uh, is there discussion? Uh, I guess they uh, going to rebid this because of uh, some issues with uh, the specs. Mm -hmm. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion is carried. Uh, resolution A, payment of bills. Is there a motion? Motion to. I'll second that motion. Motion by Freeholder Graham and a second by Freeholder Graham. Is there discussion? Overall, please. Freeholder Graham? Yes. Freeholder Graham? Yes. Freeholder Patillo? Yes. Freeholder Rose? Abstain. Freeholder Director Lazaro? Yes. Resolution B, payment of bills. Motion. Right of motion. Motion to the rest of the Seven. Oh, Motion. Seven. Motion Freeholder Graham. Second Freeholder Patillo. Is there discussion? All in favor? Oh, I'm sorry. Roll call the roll. Yes. Freeholder Brown? Yes. Freeholder Brown? Yes. Freeholder Patel? Yes. Freeholder Rose? Yes. Freeholder Director Lazaro? Yes. We don't know. The resolution would be the cancellation of outstanding checks. There were four or five of them, less than $100. Checks didn't get paid, didn't get cashed, uh, and are being canceled out. Was there uh, a good check? And we think we could take all of these, I think. Yeah, just we should be in those in total. We'll just we'll those in total. A change in title and text the amount of appropriations pursuant to NJSA, NJSA 40A colon 4 85. Resolution read the resolution providing for the canceling of various grant funds, receivables, and reserves that exist on the balance sheet of the current fund. Uh, resolution providing for the insertion of any special item of revenue. The 2017 budget of the County of Sussex relating to the 2017-18 Right to Know Grant Award. Number EPID18RTK17L for a total amount of $9,380. Is 
The resolution re providing for the insertion of any special item of revenue in the 2017 budget of the County of Sussex relating to the 2017-18 Special Child Health Services Grant Award, number DFHS18CSE018, for a total amount of 99699 A resolution re providing for the insertion of any special item of revenue in the 2017 budget of the County of Sussex related to the 2017 Senior Farmers Market Nutritional Program Grant Award of number DAFHS17 WMN005 for a total amount of $500. Resolution reading the uh, resolution providing for the insertion of any special item of revenue. In a 2017 budget of the County of Sussex relating to the fiscal year 2016, New Jersey Libraries Career Connections Grant for Uniform Career Guidance and Job Search Assistance Awards, Assistance Services Awards, Grant Modification Number One in the amount of thirty thousand oh forty six. And Resolution J providing for the insertion of any special item of revenue in the 2017 budget of the County of Sussex related to the fiscal year 2018, New Jersey Department of Military and Veterans Affairs for the provision of transportation services to Sussex County Veterans Grant Award number BL18T82 for a total amount of $9,000. Is there a motion? I make a motion. A motion by Freel de Grant. Is there a second? Second. Is there discussion? All the roll, please. Real Brown? Yes. Real Brown? Yes. Real Patillo? Yes. Real Rose? Yes. Real Director Lazaro? Yes. Introduction for first reading capital ordinance. Ordinance reading capital ordinance provided for improvements to various county roads and bridges by, in, and for the County of Sussex, State of New Jersey, and appropriating $2,522,900 and no cents from the New Jersey Department of Transportation's fiscal year 2017 annual transportation program, ATP, county aid grant to pay for the cost thereof. Uh, motion to adopt this ordinance on first reading. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, motion by Friedel Patillo and a second by Friedel to grant. Is there discussion? Let's go over how this is gonna be capitalized, particularly. Uh, Good. Uh, these these are the monies that will be used um, uh, for the county's uh, road resurfacing program. Uh, the authorization of this ordinance uh, will allow uh, the Department of Engineering uh, to identify uh, those uh, bridges and roads uh, in need of repair uh, to be programmed in as part of the county's uh, capital project so we have, we passed a resolution on february 22nd 2017 requesting that the state provide us with this that's correct and the state has come back and said yes that's what i'm reading okay and so this is not this is not county taxpayer money it's the state the state aid. this is yes this is uh this is part of the uh, state's uh, transportation trust Questions? Roll roll. Real de Brack? Yes. Real de Brack? Yes. Real de Patillo? Yes. Real de Rose? Yes. Real de Director Lazan? Yes. Motion to authorize the clerk to advertise the ordinance as introduced for first reading and also post the same on the bulletin board in the lobby of the County Administration Center. Together with a notice of public hearing stating that a hearing will be held on September 27, 2017 at 7, 7 p.m. Prior to the final adoption of this ordinance, motion to have us. Motion from Freeholder uh, by Freeholder Graham. Is there a second? Second. Second by Freeholder Rose. Is there a discussion? <coughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Uh, personnel, motion to approve personnel. Motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Freeholder Graham. Motion by, I'm sorry, motion by Freeholder Graham and second by Freeholder Graham. Is there discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion is carried. Administrative report. 
Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Friel, the director. Uh, I know you've already touched upon, but would just like to uh, announce uh, once again that uh, Sussex County Day at Champion of the Grill uh, will be this Sunday, uh, September 17th, at the fairgrounds from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m., so I'd encourage everybody to go out and have a good time. Uh, there will be representatives uh, from county staff, uh, particularly Health and Human Services, uh, being available to uh, share uh, the variety of programs that are provided uh, by the department. Uh, our membership in the statewide joint insurance fund concludes at the end of December. Uh, I'm currently reviewing options that the county may have uh, to secure quotes for liability and workers' compensation insurance. Uh, I will keep the board uh, informed as options present themselves. I had the opportunity uh, last week to visit the Emergency Operations Center uh, with Thor to ensure uh, connectivity with the Administrative Center uh, in the event that the Emergency Operations Center uh, was activated. Uh, in addition, I had the opportunity to tour the Communications Center. I'm pleased to report that significant progress has been made uh, anticipating Byron Township's participation in the Communications Center uh, based upon the uh, authorization that the Freeholder Board uh, took this evening. I know that they're working diligently to make sure that that is a smooth transition. Uh, also, I had the opportunity just this week to attend the Board of Elections ADA Advisory Committee. Uh, this evening, the Board has designated me as your representative. Uh, the Board of Elections uh, ADA Advisory Committee is made up of citizens, members of the Board of Election, and trained staff. Uh, it's very interesting, the work that they do. I don't think people generally understand all of the work that goes into the preparations uh, for elections, and this is certainly a very dedicated group of volunteers uh, who assist the county and the Board of Elections making sure that the polling places are uh, accessible. And so I look forward to uh, participating uh, as your representative uh, with that advisory committee. That concludes my report. Thank you. County Council? Nothing to report. Any unfinished business? Any new business? Seeing none, we have open public session from the floor. Please note everyone is asked to keep their comments to five minutes or less. Please state your names, by your last name, state your municipal residency. We have a motion to open public session from the floor. Motion to open. I'll second. And I have a motion by Freel and Graham and a second by Freel and Rose. Is there discussion? All in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. The floor is open. Dan Perez. Frankfort, New Jersey. I live about a half a mile outside of Branch Street, Borough. Freeholder Director of Lazaro, members of the Freeholder Board, Mr. Foth, Mr. Williams, Ms. Williams, good evening. I wear a lot of hats standing here tonight as a father, as a husband, and as a taxpayer. I'm following up with a process that I initiated yesterday starting at 11 o'clock a.m. when I received a message from the Office of Mosquito Control that the cannon would be spray spraying malathion on my street. I was alerted only because my beehives are registered with the State Department of Environmental Protection. By noon, I contacted the Division of Health. Health. I contacted the County Administrator. Mm -hmm. By 1 o'clock, I posted on my Facebook page that pesticides would be sprayed in Hardiston starting at 5 o'clock p.m. and in Branchville Borough starting today at 5 o'clock p.m. I was not aware until today that West Nile virus had been found in eight locations in Sussex County. I was not aware until yesterday that West Nile virus was found on Division Street in Branchville, less than a mile from my home. I still don't know when it was found. My children are constantly outside playing. Yesterday morning, two hours before I found out, or three hours before I found out, I stood on my front lawn playing football with my son while we waited for the bus. We spent Labor Day weekend outside. All the while, we had no idea that West Nile virus had been found by the county less than a mile from our home. We could have taken some precautions, like using insect repellent or wearing long sleeve shirts that are recommended by health departments. But why wouldn't? 
we didn't die. I couldn't protect my family because my government didn't tell me that it found West Nile virus less than a mile from my home. The county has a website with a news feed that I, I would be regular. It lists things like photo contest winners and promotions at the sheriff's department. Why couldn't the county website announce that West Nile virus had been found in eight locations in this county? When Scourge, which is a neonicotinoid known as Rosmethrin, and Malathion is going to be sprayed in residential areas, please announce it. I know the effect, so that people can take common sense measures, like bringing children inside and closing their windows and doors. I recognize and respect that the county's official position is that these chemicals are safe. I respectfully disagree. And so do a lot of other people. It's my family. I'd like to have accurate information to make my own decisions on how to protect them. Malathion has been banned in the European Union for the last 11 years and is listed as a probable carcinogen to humans by the American Cancer Society and the World Health Organization. Malathion kills honeybees, which, which fly through it. Honeybees that land on flowers the next day pick up the residue on their feet and fly it back into the hive where they track it through the sticky beeswax. That malathion and those neonicotinoids accumulate over time to the point that beekeepers are advised to replace their frames every few years because, they are, because the, the wax is soaked with chemicals. This, this is not something that I just decided yesterday to take up as an issue. I've been a beekeeper for seven years. I teach honeybee biology and behavior to the County Beekeepers Association and to local schools. And I wrote an op-ed piece that appeared in the New Jersey Herald on May 22nd of 2016. It's pretty detailed, and I brought copies, and I'd ask you to please read it. There's a lot of good, can I come up and hand it to the clerk? Thank you. One minute. Most of the parents that I know don't want their children outside when a pesticide cloud is drifting through the neighborhood. Some children have breathing problems. How could they not be told? Christina Sprintowitz's son, I believe in Hardiston, has cystic fibrosis. It affects his lungs. The county truck came through yesterday. She had no idea. It left a vapor trail that lasted for 15 minutes. All of her windows were open. I understand that she filed a police complaint yesterday. Government and citizens are partners. Partnerships only work when people share information. Nobody likes to be kept in the dark. If you hide information, your partner won't trust you. So I ask the county to keep residents informed, give municipal officials advance notice, give us a workable reverse 911 system so that the county can make mass announcements to the community. I have no reason to believe that any of the freeholders were aware of this. Time. No reason to believe that Mr. Toff was or County Council or anyone here. But someone in this county was. And they failed us by not telling us what was going on and should be held to Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Toff, Johnson, I have a question on the consent agenda. Item J, the amount here in print says $259,042. But I think Ms. Lazaro said $269,000. Is there a change? Could be in one of my glasses today, so if I saw a five and a six, I, I don't know. I heard the question. You used two five nine? It's two five nine. Okay. And uh, M. The resolution mm -hmm. regarding uh, laboratory and phlebotomy services. Yeah. Was that read? Yep. I thought it was, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I read it. You know, forget a word like phlebotomy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have another question. The software for the service office, I believe. Yeah. Yep. $145,000. Yep. It's a complete program. Uh, complete software program specifically made for surrogates offices. Yeah. The, the, the problem is it's state mandated. 
something that we put off last year. We, we discussed this in, uh, in, a, in our uh, budget. In the budget and capital, uh, capital uh, what, uh, what uh, Gary did was he actually curtailed a lot of things on his side in order to make up lower his... Uh, like Gary, you Gary Chisano? Gary Chisano. Gary Chisano did a lot of things on his side to be able to uh, allow us to put this in this way. Uh, the surrogate does not bring in a lot in fees, so it's not something that repays itself. But the state mandates reporting in very specific ways, and this is the only way that we're going to be able to do this. So they, they don't reimburse for requiring you to have the state? But on tech, they require you to have it. They just require you to report a certain way. Yeah, it's not this specific way, but it's, the, the reporting has to be done in a very specific way. And so it's something we, we discussed this, actually, we discussed this quite a bit. Yeah. We look for all different ways around it. It was either we were going to do it this year or last year or next year. Or it doesn't matter what we are going to do. So that's how we had to do it. It sounds like a lot of money for software. It is a lot. It's a lot of money also when you realize that, that the surrogate's office does not, like I said, does not bring in a lot of fees. And I can follow up also Mr. Perez's uh, comments as to when was it discovered that West Nile was in Sussex County. West Nile has been in Sussex County for a number of years. Yes. It's several years. But these recent incidents, did something happen recently with the closing the spring to go on? Uh, spring goes on every year in Sussex County. It's handled by the Division of Mosquito Control. They said traps up in different areas, and I believe they check them twice a week, and then they send them out to the state. Is that how it works? There's testing. The testing comes on, and then as soon as something like that is, is, is they get notification, and they run the spray. Well, they say West Nile has been discovered. What does that mean? Uh, there are a pool, person, pool, a person pools, has become infected. There or? are pools of positive mosquitoes. The mosquito, mosquitoes, not the person. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. My name is Mary Martin. I live in Parsippany down below, um, but I am the manager of the Dennis branch of the Sussex County Library right down the road. I've been a librarian for over 20 years, and I can tell you that I am not your grandmother's librarian. Um, the last three years I've been fortunate to spend uh, working at the Dennis branch of the Sussex County Library, and I really love my job. My coworkers are terrific, and we're all very dedicated to helping people with whatever they need, whether it's a recommendation of a good book, assistance in filling out applications for food stamps, or help with printing and faxing. We serve a lot of commuters, so we recommend and check out a lot of audiobooks. And many of our patrons either don't have internet at home or don't subscribe to services like Netflix, so our collection of DVDs and TV series is very popular. Some of the other services we provide, um, I can tell you that on any given day, I might help somebody fill out a Section 8 housing application, provide technical support for their tablet device, either in person or on the phone. I just did an on the phone one yesterday. Uh, check out a stack of graphic novels to a really excited tween. They love graphic novels. Even um, show a kid how to use an online database to do their homework, or, and this is my favorite, recommend something to read. People come in and say, I'm sorry to bother you, but could you recommend something? And I'm like, you just made my day. So our library and all the other library branches are really friendly and welcoming to all citizens of the county. And we provide a, an accessible community space for everybody. I believe that libraries are not dead. We are just in the process of evolving. I think that the people who say that libraries are no longer necessary are not people who use the library, so they don't realize what a lifeline we are to the community. So I invite you to stop by the Dennis branch or any branch of the library and if you do come to Dennis, bring your tablet and I'll help you install our cloud library software so you can read or listen to downloadable books. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Joe Gibbs, Florida, New Jersey. Um, I just wanted to know the policy of the county. Um, if a town has a contract with another town in 911 and contracts coming up, are you going to be aggressively going after the town that contract is going up so they're going to take it away from another town like you just did? Like Byron, Byron was with Sparta. And now they're going to the, your program. Did you aggressively go after them or 
Is that the policy of the county going to be from now on to go aggressively after other towns that have contracts with other towns? Well, you know, we went aggressively after anybody that was an application that was made and accepted. Okay, well, I just want to know what the policy in the future is going to be. Are you going to try to aggressively go after towns and their contracts? That's not how this happened. That's not, that's not how this happens. We're I open to receive applications uh, and press releases. Just I just finished uh, uh, writing up a press release with the administrator. Uh, the buyer made application. We accepted the application, and we're open to anybody okay. else who wants to apply to come in. Are you going to aggressively go after town when you hear about a contract? Coming? I don't understand. Any you mean by aggressively? Any decision to come to County Nine One System has been and always will be a local decision. I have no problem it's with all that. I just want to know if, if you hear of some town that has a contract coming up, are you going to go knock on their door and say, come, please come with us? Why not? I just want to know. I just want to know because I want a fair game. I agree. And I have to make sure that I look at my town and make sure, you know, I have budgets. And because you're going to stay go after them, I have to know that. Because you want to stay in the 911 business. Okay. I I'm asking. You. Pardon? Yes, I do. Because I believe, the, that's door, I believe the door should be open 24 hours a day in the town itself. That's my personal opinion. It's a local decision. I agree. But if you're going to go after it, I have to remember <coughs> that in the future. Thank you. Anyone else? Mary's a tough act to follow, but I didn't want to take the opportunity to introduce myself before I had been around to uh, So uh, I also wanted to point out a couple things that I, I, uh, I thought I'd be remiss to uh, not to bring to your attention with regard to the uh, summer reading program the library just completed. Uh, there were nearly 25 participants this year between uh, children, uh, teens and tweens, and adults. Uh, and uh, we had a 75% increase in the, in the number of adults who participated. 845 adults, there's over a thousand kids, and uh, uh, 601 teens and teens combined, uh, which was uh, just a great thing to see. Uh, I take credit for it, but I'm brand new. Uh, we have to work. Uh, but uh, uh, it was just, it was a fantastic thing to see, uh, you know, to, to kind of uh, get started here uh, in my tenure. This is, uh, uh, this is actually my third term here. I, you know, uh, some of you may recognize me from the Dennis branch or from the main library. But uh, again, I just want to introduce myself and, uh, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll echo Mary in, uh, in uh, inviting you all to stop by the library. Welcome board. Welcome board and thank you. And, and, and I uh, enjoyed the children's reading program. I participated in that. And one of my heroes, the late Zig Ziglar, always used to say, you are the same person today, and I tell all the kids this, five years from today, except for the books that you read and the people that you meet. Never forgot that when he did a seminar once, and uh, I share it with children every time I get a chance. And the books are one of the most important things that you ever put your hands on. Books, 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 books. Read. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a core belief of mine that uh, literacy is an absolute, absolutely fundamental uh, piece of democracy. Uh, and it's right at the heart of how far. Uh, All you have to do is read some of the text messages, and you'll see the literacy is sweet. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes, sir. Glenn Hall, Sanderson Township. I'm curious, um, I read in my uh, town's correspondence list a while back that, that uh, Sanderson Township was enjoined in a uh, lawsuit, I believe it's a federal lawsuit, over um, some kind of sharing services for road salt or something. I, I can't get any, anything out of the township on it. I'm curious if the Sussex County, I understand it involved quite a few uh, municipalities. That, is Sussex County involved in any, any lawsuit? Not that I know. Our Sound council can answer. We, we were for a brief period, and then uh, based upon the claim uh, being asserted as frivolous against the county, the plaintiff, by our defense council, uh, the plaintiff um, 
stipulated to our dismissal from the suit. Okay, so the county's been dismissed then? That's correct. Okay. All right. Is the suit still going on? Did you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of defendants. Pardon me? Yeah, it's a big suit. There's a lot of defendants. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, federal? It is in federal. I like the same. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? <coughs> motion to close public session. I'll make that motion. Motion for order. Rose to close public session. Is there a second? Second. Second for order for Dillon. Is there a discussion? Yes. And I have one thing I'd like to discuss. Um, the discussion regarding alerts on spraying. Um, I'd like to know better how that works. I was hoping that perhaps uh, we could um, uh, put some light on that. Uh, but we don't know at the table right now. Maybe you can come up with the. I'm talking to Greg here. <laughs> some information that gives us a better idea. I know that last year when uh, West Nile popped up in Opacon, there was, uh, we improved the alert system over there. Well, what they do is they send, how it worked for us in Opacon is they send the fax out, and then it's up to the town to put the alert system out. What happened to us yesterday was the year before, they did send the fax, we didn't see it. It must have got mixed up in other papers, so we didn't know. We had a couple of instances where um, residents called up and they were concerned uh, but normally <coughs> that's how you're you're notified is by fax and then what I believe and I'm not quite certain but what I believe as we went through this whole situation is that when they do that testing they find the myovirus they get out immediately sometimes it's within 24 hours and especially if it's going to rain they want to get out as quick as possible um, I also found out uh, we're going through this, that they don't spray when there's people. So if they're spraying on the street and they see there's people, they shut the sprayer off. Then we'll go past them for a distance and then we'll start to spray again. So I understand your concern, Dan, that you wanted to be notified. Um, I don't know if, I would imagine they had some type of notification to the town, and I don't know why the town did make a notification. Well, maybe the town did make a notification. We're, we're yeah, basing a lot know. of stuff on what we don't know, so I'm not asking for, um, yeah. Suppositions. So they sent, they well, sent some type of notification coming out of the county. Can we get it? Can we get specifics on what that is? And then can we please post that on the website as to what that policy is? And um, and so we all know for sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's all. Here's. Okay. Opposed. Motion's carried. Uh, reminders, uh, water quality management, UCC, uh, meet here on the 14th of September. September 18th, Agricultural Development Board meets here. September 20th, Lake Muskinac, Muska, NECCOM uh, Regional uh, Planning Board meets at the NECCOM Municipal Building. Uh, the September 20th, Transit Citizens Advisory Committee meets here. September 20th, uh, Lakata, 21st Lakata meets here. Uh, SCYSC meets here on the 20th. Uh, September 27th, HSAC meets at the uh, BSS building on the 3. <coughs> the next real meeting is the 27th of September. And we'll be on the road and meeting in the Freedom Municipal Building on Route 94 in Freedom Township. September 28th to 7.30 is open space meeting in the Freeholder Meeting Room. I have a motion for adjournment. I'll make a motion. Second. Motion by Freeholder Rose, a second by Freeholder Graham. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned.